Hey, I'm Shalina and welcome to my channel Curious Catacorn. Today I am doing my January wrap up. So I haven't done very many of these before, so we're going to be kind of flying by the seat of our pants here. But my January wrap up is going to consist of a few stats and then all the books that I read in the month of January. My first stat is the format that I read in and I read 11 audiobooks two ebooks and six physical books. My next set is the category I read in and the first category is adult and I read nine adult books and then I read one middle grade, six young adult, and three nonfiction. My last set of stats is for my ratings and I'll have to read these off because there's too many for me to remember but I gave one book 2.5 stars, two books 3.5 stars, two books 3.75 stars six no that's seven seven books four stars one book 4.25 stars five books 4.5 stars and one book five stars Alrighty, now that the stats are done let's get into the books the first book that i read in january is called party of two by jasmine guillory and it is the fifth book in the wedding date series now this series follows along um, different people that are kind of related to one another in some way and the very first book was about a woman named Alexa and this book is about her sister Olivia who is a lawyer and a man named Max who is a junior senator and they happen to meet in a bar one night and sort of develop a secret relationship and it's a romance so you can imagine where it goes from there and I gave it 4.25 stars. The second book I read was called Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier, and it is the first book in the Island Bites series. In this book, which is a romance, we have Charisse, who is a baker, and Kieran, who is a music producer, and they do not get along at all. However, they have to help plan festivities re revolving around their friend's wedding because Charisse is the maid of honor and Kieran is the best man. So hijinks ensue and eventually maybe they don't hate each other as much as they thought. And I gave this one 3.75 stars. The next book I read was Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. In this book, it's kind of a dystopian future where the country has kind of devolved into like the Wild West. And this girl named Esther has just watched her best friend and uh, love uh, Beatrice get executed for having propaganda that she's not supposed to have and Esther stows away on a librarian's wagon and the librarians are supposed to be like the pinnacle of upright womanhood because they deliver uh, state propaganda to all the different towns and settlements in the country and Esther learns that maybe things are not as they appear and I gave this one four stars. The next book I read was Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bouley. Now this one was kind of a tough read, but it was really good. And it is about Donis, who is a native teenager, and she witnesses a terrible tragedy happen. And because of it gets kind of pulled into this undercover uh, investigation that is happening in her community, and she goes along with it to help try to save her community from the uh, drugs that have infiltrated seemingly everywhere and it was a really like I said it was a really tough read but it was very very good very well written and I gave it four and a half stars the next book that I read was cry wolf by Patricia Briggs this is the first book in the Alpha and Omega series which is a spin-off series of the Mercy Thompson series which I absolutely adore and I borrowed this from a friend thank you Lindsay and this book is about Anna and Charles and they have met and Anna is an Omega wolf and that is a special kind of werewolf and Charles has immediately determined upon meeting her basically that she is his mate and Anna's wolf agrees but the human parts of the werewolves aren't so sure so they have to kind of get together and see if they're going to be a good match. And in doing so, Anna joins Charles's pack in Montana, but there's a rogue werewolf on the loose that may be attacking people. And so the two of them go and try to figure out the mystery of, is there a rogue wolf? And if so, how can they stop them? 
I give this book four and a half stars. The next book I read was Who Done It by edited by John Seiska. And this book was written by various young adult and children's authors. And the premise of the story is that this editor has been murdered. And this editor was the editor for all of these authors and that they all have to write out their alibis for how and why they didn't kill him. Um, it was an interesting collection of stories. However, there was a lot of fat phobia, a lot of just, just really rampant kind of grossness uh, in terms of like describing people and it was just not that great. So I gave it two and a half stars. My next book was The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. It is the third book in the Kiss Quotient series and it is a romance about Anna who is a violinist and she has a boyfriend but he has asked to be in an open relationship before he decides you know whether or not they should either get engaged or break up. And so she's kind of befuddled by this whole thing. She doesn't quite understand it. Um, she may be on the autism spectrum. And she goes and signs up for these dating apps and she meets Quan. And Quan is a wonderful guy. He's the CEO of a clothing company that he runs with his cousin Michael, who was the hero of the first book, The Kiss Quotient. And they get together, but try to have like a one night stand just to kind of ease Anna into like not being in a relationship anymore. But it doesn't quite work because Anna is riddled with anxiety and has a lot of issues. And Quan also has some issues. He had been sick and uh, hasn't really been with anybody since he had been sick. So yeah, the two of them get together and through uh, a lot of trials and tribulations basically get together and you know, romance ensues. And I gave this book four stars. The next book I read was Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women, A Movement for God by Mickey Kendall. This is a nonfiction book about intersectionality and feminism. Mickey Kendall posits that the feminist movement should priori prioritize meeting basic needs for women, such as uh, food insecurity, quality, access to quality education, things like the housing insecurity things like that and that in doing so more women would be benefited than how the movement currently prioritizes things uh in doing so instead of getting the most for all women it kind of only in increases the privileges of a few so yeah so it was a really well researched and thought out book and i gave it five stars the next two books that I read were both by Patricia Briggs and they are books two and three in the Alpha and Omega series. And I'm not going to really say anything about them because they are the sequels to Cry Wolf. And so I don't really want to give anything away as to anything that has happened in the series. Um, but they are called Hunting Ground, which I gave four stars and Fair Game, which I gave 3.75 stars. The next book I read was a graphic novel called Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. It is about Nick and Charlie and they're two boys that meet in a class and they develop a very close friendship and eventually maybe something more. And it was a really cute graphic novel that I enjoyed and I gave it three and a half stars. The next book I read was called The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon and this is the first book in the Bone Season series. This book was a reread for me. I wanted to read the next books in the series, but it's been so long since I had read this first book that I needed to reread it. And I did, and it's about Paige, who is a clairvoyant. And in this day and time, it's a dystopian kind of futuristic sci-fi story. It's set, I think, in like 2059. Um, clairvoyants are illegal. It's illegal to be a clairvoyant and you can be killed or jailed um, just for exi existing. And Paige uh, works for this um, crime underlord syndicate, but she gets caught one day and gets sent to Oxford, which was kind of thought of to be like a lost city. And turns out there are some secrets and some things going on that her government has been hiding. And yeah, and it's a really fun, uh, fun book. And I gave it, what did I give it? Four and a half stars. <laughs> the next two books I read were Persepolis and Persepolis 2, both by Marjane Satrapi. These depict Marjane's childhood, um, teenage years when she moves to Austria, and young, uh, young adult life when she returns to Iran. 
Uh, and they're very interesting, very kind of dark and heavy for graphic novels that you would expect, but very, very good. And I gave each of these four stars. The next book I read was Winterborn Home for Vengeance and Valor by Allie Carter. This is the first book in the Winterborn series. And it is about a girl named April who is an orphan and lives in a foster home. And she accidentally sets fire to a museum after a field trip and gets uh, introduced to this woman who runs the Winterborn Foundation. And they offer for her to come live in the Winterborn home. And in doing so, April finds out that the long lost Gabriel Winterborn, who has been searched for and there's like a $5 million bounty basically if you know anything about where he is, uh, finds that he is actually living in the basement of the home and there's a reason he has been hiding himself away for so long. So it's a really fun kind of mystery uh, adventure story for middle graders and it was really good and I gave it four and a half stars. The next book I read was kind of a challenging read for me and it is called My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. And it is about a woman named Vanessa, and it's actually two timelines in the book. We see her as a 15 year old and her as an adult, I think she's like 32, um, coming to terms with the fact that she was groomed and abused by her teacher when she was a teenager. And like I said, it's a pretty rough read, but it was very well written and I really enjoyed the depictions of trauma survivors and I gave it four and a half stars. The last three books that I read in January were collections of comics, and these are Giant Days Volume 1, Giant Days Volume 2, and Giant Days Volume 3. And these are by John Allison, Lissa Tremaine, and Max Saren. And these all are about, uh, it's kind of a slice of life comic series about Esther, Daisy, and Susan who are going to school or going to university uh, in England and just kind of the hijinks and uh, shenanigans they get up to while they're in school. And I really enjoy these. Um, I gave them different ratings. I think I gave the first one three and a half stars, but I gave volumes two and three four stars each. Well, that's it. That is my 19 book January wrap up. How did you do this month? What did you read? What were your favorites? What were your least favorites? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you thought and I will talk to y'all again soon. Bye!